take a couple of hours for that process to be completed and um, obviously due to the serious nature of the charges it's my advice to her that she should not be addressing the media at this point that I should be doing that on her behalf. Your name is? Sarah Swain. And you're her attorney? I am. I have some cards for people. It has all Thank my contact you. information on it. So what are the charges and, and your answer to them? Well, she's charged with some incredibly serious charges. Um, in the state of Kansas, all drug crimes are on a grid that goes from a level one to a level five, with a level one being the most serious, which is the equivalent of manufacturing methamphetamine. That would be the, the easiest crime that most people would know about. Um, she's charged with one level one, um, she's charged with a level two. The level one crime alone could send her to prison for more than 15 years. And the combination of the five different charges that she has could send her to prison for over 30 years if convicted and sentenced. And she's how old? 38. Yeah, 38. 38. She's, she's 38. Okay. So it's, a, it's not only is it essentially a life sentence, but this is a woman who was using cannabis to treat a disease, Crohn's disease, that was absolutely debilitating. So not only is it that she's facing life in prison just due to the years, but essentially it's a death sentence. If she is sent to prison and does not have access to the treatment that she was using that cured her of her Crohn's disease and allowed her to live a somewhat normal life, it's absolutely the equivalent of her being sentenced to death. What's your evidence that she's cured? Well, the evidence um, would come forth in testimony by her children. Um, she was not able to function as a mother during the years where she was battling Crohn's disease before she started using cannabis oil. I think her children would be the, the best testimony to that. She was essentially parenting from a couch. Um, she was in and out of hospitals. She had multiple surgeries. Um, it was absolutely debilitating and all of that would be present in her medical records. Um, the same records would show that once she started using cannabis oil, all, almost all of the conditions that she was suffering from, her inability to maintain weight, the chronic pain that she was in, um, all of those things essentially disappeared with her use of cannabis oil. What's your current status health-wise when you say that putting her in jail would be a death sentence? Well, her current status is that she's without her medicine. I mean, cannabis oil to thousands of people in this country, if not millions of people, is medicine. It's people who choose to use a natural medicine instead of all of the prescriptions that they could possibly take. If, if Shauna Banda's home had been filled with prescription bottles at the time her house was raided and, and this search was done, we wouldn't be here. But those medicines were not curing her the way that cannabis oil did. So it is medicine and she's already lost a, a dramatic amount of weight since she has not been using it. Um, she has had to have oral surgery due to some infections in her mouth that were kept at bay when she was using cannabis oil that have now can come back. Um, so her health is not good and I think it will only continue to deteriorate as this case drags on and as we take the time necessary to really fight it and fully litigate all of these issues. Normally we don't disclose, we don't ask this of, of somebody about their health, but uh, what was she taking prior to using cannabis oil? I don't know the answer to that question. She had more prescriptions than she could count. Um, she wrote a book um, and in that book she detailed going from, essentially her journey from being in and out of hospitals, the multiple surgeries, and almost immediately upon starting to use cannabis oil, within days, her Crohn's disease was in, in complete remission. Um, and so, you know, the, the dozens of prescriptions that she were taking, she was taking, became unnecessary with only the use of cannabis oil being the one thing 
that essentially saved her. Do we know what her son specifically said in the school that sparked this whole investigation? Well, I don't know specifically because obviously we are starting the process of litigating this case today by her surrendering herself on this on this warrant. I will have access to all of the reports and discovery in the case shortly. Hopefully by the time I leave here tomorrow, I will have all of that. Um, but this is a woman who was so moved by the rapid progress that she found when she started using cannabis oil that she wanted to give that information to her children. She wanted them to know that if given the choice between using a natural plant versus using narcotic prescriptions, um, that, that her advice to her own children would be use, use the natural plant. This is something that to, um, is far more helpful, is far safer than most of these prescriptions, has far fewer side effects. And so she was very open in the education that she gave her children. And my understanding is that in this discussion of the evils of marijuana that was taking place at school, her son simply said, no, I, I, I disagree with what you're saying about that plant. Um, and things snowball from there. I, I don't know that for sure, but obviously we will get that information once we start getting the police reports. Are you of the opinion that a son shouldn't be able to incriminate his mother? I'm of the opinion that in the year 2015, it is absolutely ludicrous that marijuana is still a Schedule One drug. That's what I believe. That, that's what this all boils down to. Everybody knows that there are medicinal benefits to this plant. There are not just one or two or five studies. There are hundreds, maybe thousands of studies that have shown that this plant cures cancer. It puts Crohn's disease in remission. It helps people with seizures. Um, I'm good friends with a woman who has a young child who has childhood epilepsy and she watches her son every day have seizures, any one of which could kill him. Um, and because they live in the state of Kansas, she can't give her child this natural medicine that has been shown to save people's lives. So the real issue to me in this case is not just about Sean Abanda, it's why do we have marijuana classified as a Schedule One drug, which requires, a Schedule One drug requires that there be no medicinal benefits to that substance, such as methamphetamine or heroin or crack cocaine. There aren't any studies out there that will show you that if you smoke meth, that it's going to save your life. There are hundreds of studies that will tell you that about marijuana. So the fact that this country continues the war on drugs, which is really just a war on families um, and a war on the poor, is absolutely ridiculous. And it's our goal with this case to not just change the way that Shauna Banda is treated here in Garden City, Kansas, but to take this case every step of the way to litigate it all the way up to the United States Supreme Court if we need to, to make sure that this drug is no longer classified as a Schedule One drug. And as soon as it's classified as something less than that, millions of people's lives will be positively affected by that change. So is it your strategy then to not really try to get the case thrown out uh, based on you know illegal questioning of the of the boy uh, and and to take the actual issues up through the chain of, of the courts well my strategy is to do what's best for my client first and what's best for Shauna Banda is that the tactics that were employed by DCF, the Division of Children and Family, in questioning her child and the tactics that were employed by the Garden City Police Department and the Sheriff's Department are thoroughly litigated. Um, I certainly think there are some issues that exist with the constitutionality of the way the information was gathered, the search warrant was prepared, the eventual search of her house was done, and I will litigate all of those issues fully, um, but, but I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to litigate this issue even at the district court level 
um, as if this is a case that can change the law, not just here, not just in Garden City, not just in Kansas, but in throughout the entire country. That, that's what our goal is, and I know it's a lofty goal, but I think it's an incredibly important goal. But a lot of people would say this isn't the proper way to do this because um, of the illegality right now, they would say work with the legislature, try to get elected representatives to uh, see and share your point of view. What would you say to them? Well, what I would say to them is that I'm not sure our legislature is capable of doing anything right. That's where I would start. Um, we have a legislature in the state of Kansas that can't stop taxing the poor, so why would I expect them to get on board with ending the war on drugs, which is a war on poor people? Um, I'm, I'm tired of waiting. There are thousands of people who are dying because this plant is not legal, and I'm not gonna wait. I'm, I'm ready to move this issue forward. And um, it's not something that can be done state to state. That, that's the conclusion I've reached. In all of these states where it has been legalized, quote unquote legalized, we don't know exactly what that means because every state is different. So that's why my goal is to take this federally to make sure that what happens is that it is rescheduled federally because that makes it an even playing field across the board that changes the rules in every single state, and it makes sure that people that need this as their medicine, that people who want to use it recreationally, that everybody has access to this plant that is safe and natural and saves people's lives. So it begins at a local level. How many steps do you have to take to get to federal court? I don't know, um, but I'm willing to take however many steps I need to. Um, I'm sure it'll take many, many steps, but we are here with the, uh, the petition that um, was started online by one of Shauna's friends. They gained almost 150,000 signatures from the inception of this case. There is an entire army of people, of supporters in this country and really worldwide. We, we have had people reach out to us from around the globe in support of Shauna and her situation. So this, this issue is bigger, it's bigger than this case, and we're going to continue to build on the momentum we already have and continue to build on the support that we already have. And I think it's really important for all of the people out there that support legalizing marijuana, that support people's use of cannabis as medicine, that support decriminalization of this, that everyone come out into the light and that we all work together because there's a lot of people that support this change that are scared. They're scared because of the stigma. They're scared they think that I don't want to talk about this in my home because what happens if my child goes to school and, and says something and the same thing happens to me. So one of the one of the things that I will continue to encourage people to do is to come out into the light and everybody needs to be expressing their support for this vocally and i think that by having everybody come forward and and work together we can effect effectuate true change on this on this subject what do you think is going to happen what will happen the day after shauna's been processed in the sheriff's office well she will be processed her bond was set at fifty thousand dollars that bond will be posted thanks to the donations that came in on the GoFundMe account. And I would encourage people to continue to show their support of her by continuing to donate to the GoFundMe. Um, we will be scheduling a, a first appearance first thing in the morning. We will appear in court at that time and the, the subsequent court appearance will be scheduled from there and sometime in the next few months we will have a preliminary hearing where the state will have to bring in their evidence, i.e. police officers, who will have to get on the stand and talk about how everything went down on the day in question. Um, and that's really when the litigation of the case will begin, will be at the preliminary hearing. Are you doing this pro bono? I am not doing it pro bono. Um, I would, I would do it pro bono. I fortunately, Shauna was able to raise uh, funds through this well, GoFundMe, well, well, and I was yeah, uh, I, I was paid for my services uh -huh. out of that. 
I'm a lawyer out of Kansas City, so obviously this is um, quite the drive to get out here. Um, this is not a case that, that I'm doing because I'm going to get rich doing it. It's a case that I'm doing because I absolutely believe in this issue. Um, I'm the daughter of a disabled veteran who served in Vietnam and has suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder his entire adult life since returning from the war. And he is someone who has found relief from post-traumatic stress disorder only through use of cannabis. Um, unfortunately, he lives in a state where it is illegal. Um, and so when you watch someone close to you suffer um, and, and have to be put in a situation where they have to choose between the only medicine that helps them and violating the law, what advice do you give that person that you love? No, you shouldn't do it because it's breaking the law. I mean, I'm a criminal defense attorney, but I also love my family and, and love my father. And if it's something that helps him and keeps him alive, then I want him to do that. And if me taking on this battle and being the person that's gonna stand next to Shauna Banda and fight for her helps him, then it's something that I wanna be involved in. Uh there's a dichotomy in the debate right now between cannabis itself and uh, cannabis oil that lacks the psychoactive compounds. So are you fighting for cannabis oil or for the psychoactive form too? I'm fighting for everybody's right to use a plant that is safe and natural and what i see a lot in the community in the activist community is there's a lot of division everybody likes to point fingers at each other the people who want to be allowed to use it recreationally are are in opposition to the people who are using it for medicine um, and what i say is we're all on the same team we're all on the same team we're all fighting for the same thing which is getting this drug rescheduled if it, if it becomes anything other than a Schedule One drug, all of these debates go away. Well, you can use the oil, but you can't use it if it contains THC. If it's rescheduled, all of those things become legal and people can use them freely and safely and naturally. There are fewer people that have died from marijuana, which is exactly zero. There is not a single confirmed death ever from the use of marijuana in the history of the world. And this is a plant that has been around since the beginning of time. Every single year, we have people in this country that die from taking aspirin, aspirin, which is legal. We have people dying from overusing narcotics, hundreds, thousands. It's become one of the leading causes of death in this country. All of those are legal, but we're going to continue to make this safe, natural plant illegal for what? What are we gaining by by marijuana being illegal? We're gaining nothing except for a absolutely burgeoning prison population where we are spending our taxpayers' dollars keeping people incarcerated because they used or possessed a plant. Um, it's it's ludicrous and it's time to end that and it's time to keep people from going to prison for this plant and if there's anything that I can do to aid in that I'm gonna do it too. If the purpose is for Shawna to get custody of her son back and for her to clear her name is there a worry that having a press conference like this and, and, and making an example from this case will hurt her case in some way? Mm -hmm. Well, I think yeah. there are probably people out there that would make that argument. I believe that true change can only be effectuated when you shine a spotlight on an issue that most people would rather keep in the dark. And I refuse to believe that by keeping an issue in the dark that, that I'm somehow helping my client. Um, this press conference wasn't scheduled because Shauna Banda wanted it to be. It was scheduled because she believes in everything that I'm talking about and she is willing to be the person that says this is wrong and I'm going to do whatever I can to change it. 
and she's fully aware that that may have consequences on the, the timing of her being able to get her son back. But here's the bottom line. If she does not have access to her medicine, she will die. And she can't parent her child if she's not alive. There are too many people in this country that are having to make those kinds of decisions. Do I take my medicine? Do I, do I violate the law? Or do I try to make sure that I can be around to be a parent to my child? Or even, or, or even an even more horrifying situation. Do I give my child this medicine that will keep them alive knowing that I'm violating the law? Or do I let my child die? I can't, I'm, I'm the mother of a three-year-old child and I can't imagine what it would be like to have to make a decision like that. And I want to do whatever I can to make sure that parents aren't being forced to make that decision anymore. What Where proof are you do you have that she would die? Well, I think the proof is in her medical records. She almost died on multiple occasions prior to her use of cannabis oil. It's, it, this isn't something that's being contrived. I mean, the woman wrote a book about her experience years before we ever knew that any of this was going to happen that documents everything that I'm talking about. Um, there are medical records that support all, all of the contentions that I'm making right now. And certainly at some point we may need to produce those records and we will be happy to do that. Where did she get the oil? Oil is extracted from, uh, from dried marijuana. There's a, a process that she uses. There's a video that she actually made that you can watch on YouTube where she has taught other people how to extract the oil. Um, she has, since she discovered the amazing benefits of using cannabis oil as medicine, she has taken it upon herself to spread that knowledge throughout the country and around the world. And I can tell you just in the last couple of months since becoming her attorney, I have been contacted by more people than I can count who say to me, I'm alive today because I read Shauna Banda's book. And, I'm alive today because I watched her video and I learned how to make my own oil and I've been using it and it cured my cancer. It shrunk the size of my brain tumor. It has allowed me to live a life that I never thought I would ever get back. I mean, these are powerful stories from people who have no reason to reach out and say these things, but for that it's absolutely the truth. But they're all anecdotal. They are, but there's science. There, there's, there are more studies than I could count um, that don't, in, in the United States, it's illegal to study marijuana and, and the medicinal benefits of it because of the fact that it's a schedule one drug. If we were to reschedule marijuana, we would be allowed in this country to then do actual trials and, and get the results and, and have the scientific proof that this really does what, what I'm saying it does. But in other countries, Israel has been the leading country of doing this research. They frequently do human trials where they have been able to show the amazing medicinal benefits of cannabis from in, in everything from cancer to Alzheimer's disease, to Crohn's disease, to epilepsy. Um, it is far reaching. There, there's. I would go so far as to say that there's virtually no physical ailment that exists that cannabis can't help a person with. And that Israel study was funded by the U.S. Everybody should be using it. I absolutely believe that we would be a better country if people were using cannabis to treat their ailments than using prescriptions. I absolutely believe that. As far as this being like a medical issue, you said it's a larger issue than Shauna. All that being said, the charges being brought against her, the amount of drugs and paraphernalia that police officers found in there. Doesn't child endangerment and intent to distribute, how does that connect to, oh, it's a medical need? Well, first of all, um, there's been no evidence presented <laughs> as to the amount of uh, marijuana or cannabis mm -hmm. that was actually seized from her house. There is a number that's contained in the charging document that I think is inflated. 
Um, generally, my experience is, and a lot of times when a house is searched and items are taken, instead of weighing the actual cannabis that's taken, all of the, the paraphernalia is weighed, and the amount that's used in charging includes, for instance, in this case, there was a vaporizer that was taken. That's the, uh, the, the tool by which the oil is extracted. Um, my guess would be that in that amount that they have charged her with, there's numerous items that were weighed that will not be able to support that charge once we start litigating it. So in order to extract oil from cannabis, it, it takes a large amount. It, you, you can't take a handful of cannabis and extract the amount of oil that you need to be using as medicine. Um, so that's not something that, that, that we're here to litigate. It's not, it, nobody has ever disputed that Shauna Banda had cannabis in her home. Mm -hmm. She herself, when she moved to Garden City, went to the sheriff's department, gave them a copy of her book and said, this is who I am and this is my story. Um, this is not a woman who, she, she chose not to live in fear of criminal charges. Mm -hmm. And that's probably a mistake on mm -hmm. her part because at the end of the day, she lived in a state where it's still illegal to possess cannabis. It's illegal to extract oil from it, even if you're using it as medicine. Um, and that's why this case isn't about Kansas, and it's not about Finney County. It's about what do we have to do to make sure that no other parents are having to choose between having their medicine and going to jail. Are you inferring that she was okay legally until the Department of Children and Families got involved? I'm no, I'm not inferring that at all. I'm inferring that she she did not live in fear, i.e. she didn't tell her son every day, now make sure that you don't talk to anyone about this. Um, she, I mean, it takes yeah, some guts I, I to do. walk into um, the sheriff's I department in Finney County, I'm Kansas, sure where you know marijuana is that, illegal, that and say, right here's my book that I wrote that about my use of I'm cannabis oil and how it saved my life. That, um, that is a woman who is choosing to live her life truthfully, mm -hmm. to um, not hide the fact yeah. that, that this is medicine they, that they has saved her. Really and drama. unfortunately they now she's dealing with the real life consequences oh, of living her life that way. Yeah. What's the status of her son's custody? I'm not the attorney on that case. Um, mm -hmm. There's another attorney yeah. that represents yeah. her on that, but she does not have custody of her son. He is still in state custody now. And any other questions about the details of what's going on with that would need to be addressed by her other attorney. So just to recap, posting on the bond today, $50,000. Tomorrow, what is the request? And when do you expect to be in court for an initial hearing? Well, we'll be in court at 8.30 in the morning for a you first appearance. Um, it will be in the courtroom that's downstairs here. Um, at that time, we will schedule it for a hearing in front of the district court judge and that hearing I'm expecting will take place in 30 to 45 days and then th by virtue of having the first appearance tomorrow I will have access to all of the police reports and discovery in the case and I will be able to start reviewing all of that and formulating my strategy for defending the court. Are you concerned that you're going to be accused of trying to litigate this case in the press and the judge will be upset at you? Well, I'd say that's always a concern. Um, this is not this is not about me choosing to litigate this case in the press. When I got involved in this case, it was already it, it had already made national news at that point. Um, every single day, I get probably a dozen requests from various media people for interview statements, updates on the case. Um, so this case is going to be in the media, whether we talk about it or not. It is an issue of such importance that I think that it needs to be talked about in the media. The way you affect change is through changing the public perception of an issue. And the, the stigma that is attached in this country still by some people to the use of marijuana, I think is outdated. 
Um, it's time for that to change. And if talking about this case in the media helps change the public perception, then I absolutely think that that's the best thing for everyone involved. How did you come to be the attorney here for her? I was actually contacted by Shauna the day that her house was surrounded by the, the Garden City Police Department. Um, she reached out to Jennifer Wynn, who is a, a, a mutual friend of ours, who has been a marijuana activist, a cannabis activist in Kansas, who ran against Sam Brownback for governor. Um, and she was given my information by Jennifer Wynn, and then she called me on my cell phone as she was sitting outside of her house, not being allowed access to her home. Um, and so that was the beginning of, of my involvement in the case. I mean, do you normally litigate drug just, cases? Is this is this why you're the appropriate the attorney here? Um, I'm not a I'm I'm not a cannabis attorney. Um, I I think that makes me the perfect attorney for the case. I'm not someone who's been uh, an activist in the cannabis community. I have never litigated a case like this before, but. I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do and because my own personal experiences with my dad, um, I think make me the perfect attorney to litigate this from the perspective of what's fair and what's just and what changes need to happen globally on this issue. So, you know, I wasn't reached out to because I'm known as, you know, the attorney that, that goes around the country or even around the state litigating issues like this. Um, it was sort of serendipity that I became the attorney on the case, and, and I'm, I'm happy to be the person that gets to stand next to Shauna and, um, and make these arguments. Thank you.